to look for some shots early. He's got to get them going from the perimeter. And underway, the tip goes out of bounds. Our referees are Tim Clockerty, Tony Henderson, and Nathan Farrell. So a decision three seconds in. The Providence starting five. Ed Croswell and Bryce Hopkins up front. Bynum, Carter, and Locke in the backcourt. Couple transfers there with Carter and Locke and Hoskins. Archie Miller has been traditionally a man-to-man, -man, intense pressure basketball coach. Good pass in the post for Devin Carter. Played last year at South Carolina. Here come the Rams. And they're starting five. Abdu Sam in the front court with Joseph Apalau, Martin Leggett, and Freeman in the backcourt. Rhode Island shooting 37% and averaging 63 points per game. Malik Martin, a fadeaway with contact, and an N1. Foul on Jared Byman. Now Byman got matched up against Martin down in the low box, and Rhode Island did a good thing. They cleared out some space for him, but a really highly, highly difficult shot off the window. He's only shooting 29%. We see that up and down the lineup to him. It's hard to crack 40% for a Rhode Island shooter. Well, you know, when we talked to Archmill the other day, he said, we understand who we are. We're not a great shooting team. Hopefully we can knock in a couple, but we have to work inside out to try to get some cleaner looks, not only from the three, but from the two. And that time they went in directly into the post of Mark. Interesting comment from Ed Cooley this morning at shoot-around. He said, we're already down eight to nothing due to the crowd and due to the frenzied atmosphere. Do you agree? Eight might be a stretch, but <laughs> whatever you can sell to your team to get them ready. And that's uh, was fiery. There's Archie. He, he had a fiery practice on Thursday. We were here. And then Ed was, Ed was a little cranky yesterday after that loss at TCU on Wednesday night. He's, he's just trying to find some consistency and a little bit more toughness from his club. The foul is on Malik Martin. Hoskins has pretty good range. Only six minutes per game last year at Kentucky. Good pass in the post. And a turnover. Here come the Rams. Leggett stolen away by Croswell. Now that is an Achilles heel for Rhode Island. They do not pass the ball very well. Archie Miller says they have to cut turnovers down to a 10 or 11 per game. And there's a turnover on the Friars, a travel. Uh, you see what Archie Miller is doing defensively right out of the gate. They're going to send the army at Hopkins. When he catches the ball down in the box, they're going to make him a passer. They can kick it out to the perimeter and see if Providence can beat Rhode Island from the outside. Ed Cooley is frenetic on the sideline. Reigning Naismith Coach of the Year. What a season they had last year. Go to the Sweet 16. Tough game to coach in, as you well know, as Leggett goes baseline. He's uh, called the foul. Uh, Devin Carter is just a terrific on-ball defender. There you see him in the help position. He rotates as good as anybody around. He'll take it right in the chest, and he is a fun guy to watch on the defensive end of the floor. How do you balance the emotions as a coach in this game? Well, you just got to play. You just got to play. You got to block it out. You know, these guys have played in big arenas their whole career. It's not a big deal. You know, they've played at Villanova. They've played at tough places. So Providence can handle it. I know Ed was trying to build up the atmosphere. But once you get playing and make a couple shots, things can ease up. That will help the cause by Noah Locke, the Louisville transfer. 33% from distance as Providence ties it up. Well, that's what Locke does. He's a catch-and-shoot guy. Rhode Island must pay attention to him probably more than anyone else out on the perimeter. Locke, outstanding experience with Louisville and Florida. And how about that three? The big fella. Joseph Papalau, not known for his reign. Find him off the bounce. Pretty in the paint. Yeah, that's a good drive by Bynum. He found an alley there, and Rhode Island did not rotate and give enough help quickly enough, and he had his head up and terrific move at the rim. Moments ago, the first three of the season for Joseph Apalau. Well, I told you this, Nader, earlier, that weird things sometimes happen in this game, and sometimes guys make shots that haven't made them all year long. And Brayon Freeman's been making a lot of shots, four straight games in double figures, including a 
season high, career high, 21 at BC. Uh, Jared, Bynum, ball. Jared Bynum has struggled mightily this season from the perimeter, and now he's, he's attacking the rack. At times during the air, he dribbles the ball, pounds it in the ground, but that time he made a quick decision, got an angle, and finished at the rim on the weak side. And we welcome the audience watching on ESPNU with Tim Welsh on John Mita Perel. The Ocean State rivalry off to a good start as Hoskins drives the paint for Providence. Hope you enjoy the Oakland and Purdue Fort Wayne game, a thriller in overtime. Tim, the first three and a half minutes, what do you make of it? Uh, very intense defense. Both teams are just getting after it. Hard ball pressure, denial on the wing, and then when the ball goes into the paint, the house is coming. And a turnover by Sebastian Thomas. The series history packed with drama. This is like a tournament game for both teams. Providence leading 75-56. But you say throw out the records. You coached in 10 of these, and you know how the pressure can crank up. Well, the pressure does crank up. There's just a different feel in the building. There's just a kind of a buzz in the end. It doesn't go away. A lot of times the atmosphere starts out wild. It kind of can lose a little bit depending on the level of play in the game. This game will deliver for two hours. Four turnovers already for Rhode Island. Noah Locke. Hoskins, good take. But the double team and the rebound put up and in by Cotton. They were Castro, rather. They hoped to get some offense for him off the bench. Well, that's what happened because of the dribble drive by Hopkins. They gave help on the back side and left Castro on the weak side wide open. No one blocked him out. Freeman. Tightly guarded by Bynum. A nice new move on the baseline. Brayon Freeman. Here comes Bynum. Like a blur in the front court. Good decision or no? Well, it may be a little rush. You know, you get caught up in the frenzy of this game, and both teams are not even attempting to run offense. It's just one pass and attack. Well, Freeman's a key guy. He played well in his freshman year a year ago, and his numbers are down this year. His decision making has to be better. So far, he looks intense tonight. Martin, a Charlotte transfer. And Hoskins engulfs the rebound. He'll do a lot of that. Providence, excellent rebounding team. Providence is a very good rebounding team. That was a big concern, and they're not playing a pick and roll properly. Castro, after the delivery from Bynum, a little two man game in the middle of the floor. So four quick points off the bench for Castro. Martin had four blocks against BC in their loss Sunday. Freeman knifing through the defense. Sam, industrious off the glass. Well, both teams attacking the paint from the pick and roll. And, and if you don't draw those extra defenders in, it's basically a two on two game in the middle of the floor. That time, no one blocked out Sam. Sam shooting 60%. The three by Carter. Here comes Sebastian Thomas. He's from Providence. Good pass. And that was nifty, wasn't it, to Sam? Sebastian Thomas really knows how to run the team. He's a pinpoint passer, not a shooter, but knows his goal out there on the floor. Also a good on-ball defender. Rhode Island shooting a scintillating 69%. Bynum ran into Thomas. Freeman on the wing to Martin. And out of bounds off Hoskins. Good start from Kingston, Rhode Island's feeling it on the offensive end. And we welcome the audience watching on ESPNU with Tim Welsh on John Mita Perel. The Ocean State rivalry off to a good start as Hoskins drives the paint for Providence. Hope you enjoy the Oakland and Purdue Fort Wayne game, a thriller in overtime. Tim, the first three and a half minutes, what do you make of it? 
Uh, very intense defense. Both teams are just getting after it. Hard ball pressure, denial on the wing, and then when the ball goes into the paint, the house is coming. And a turnover by Sebastian Thomas. The series history packed with drama. This is like a tournament game for both teams. Providence leading 75-56. But you say, throw out the records. You coached in 10 of these, and you know how the pressure can crank up. Well, the pressure does crank up. There's just a different feel in the building. There's just a kind of a buzz in the air, and it doesn't go away. A lot of times the atmosphere starts out wild. It kind of can lose a little bit depending on the level of play in the game. This game will deliver for two hours. Four turnovers already for Rhode Island. Noah Locke. Hoskins, good take. But the double team and the rebound put up and in by Cotton. Castro, rather. They hope to get some offense from him off the bench. Well, that's what happened because of the dribble drive by Hopkins. They gave help on the back side and it left Castro on the weak side wide open. No one blocked him out. Freeman. Tightly guarded by Bynum. A nice new move on the baseline. Brayon Freeman. Here comes Bynum like a blur in the front court. Good decision or no? Well, it may be a little rush. You, know, you get caught up in the frenzy of this game, and both teams are not even attempting to run offense. It's just one pass and attack. Well, Freeman's a key guy. He played well in his freshman year a year ago. And his numbers are down this year. His decision-making has to be better. So far, he looks intense tonight. Martin, the Charlotte transfer. And Hoskins engulfs the rebound. He'll do a lot of that. Providence, excellent rebounding team. Providence is a very good rebounding team. That was a big concern, and they're not playing a pick and roll properly. Castro, after the delivery from half minutes. Watch him notice Look at Will play hard, but he needs to play great for us to win. Do you feel like Archie is just trying to establish a, a culture here, a, build a new foundation? Well, he, he understands. He's up against it in a lot of ways in his first year here. There's an illegal screen off the ball. Um, you know, the thing with him, they, talking to him the other day, he has been through it all he, as a, a head coach at Dayton, Indiana. He understands, you know, he's not a young coach anymore. He understands what it's going to take to rebuild this program. And it starts with patience, and he talks, talks about daily improvement. He says, of course, winning is important, but daily improvement is more important at this point. At Indiana, he won 67 games. He was 67 and 58. Good move down low. Strong move by Clifton Moore. Providence has nine points off of five Rhode Island turnovers, and Moore averaged more than 12 points per game last year for LaSalle. Well, Moore's a good player. He can step out and make a shot as well on the perimeter, and Providence, you can see, they're trying to pound the ball inside. Triple team. Freeman works out of it to Thomas. Under five to shoot. What a pass. Leggett, the beneficiary. Uh, nice move on the back side by Leggett. And that's what you have to do against this Providence defense. You cannot stand still because they're going to smother the ball. You've got to move without the basketball. That time, just a perfect delivery. Nice back cut on the weak side. And a foul. Well, with your head up against this defense, that's what you have to do. And keep your dribble alive, keep the floor spaced, and if you're too tight, Providence's physicality will overcome you. But so far, Rhode Island's had good spacing in the half court. And Peter, it's, it's a hard game to play here today. It's a hard game to coach, but it's also a hard game to officiate. These teams are really going at each other on the defensive end. The foul was on Alex Chiku, the Alabama transfer. His first. Moore to Croswell, who gathered nicely. Good catch. Hot pass by Moore. Well, today's basketball game is more of a five-out, you know, three-and-D type game. Providence is old school. They'll play the two bigs together. They'll play some high-low, and they'll try to pound the ball into the paint. Croswell has good numbers, 11 points and seven rebounds. Roswell Cleaners was open for business last year. Well, 
I'll tell you what, though, every shot has been contested. Rhode Island not going to the glass on that possession because they are worried about Providence in transition. Moore runs into the defender, Chiku. And it's an offensive foul. So you're right with a one point lead. Ever leave your clothes in the dryer and find a wrinkled mess? It's a real basketball state. That's why today is such a special day. Ed Cooley says, we need some dudes. He's waiting for the toughness to emerge that he had in volumes last year on their run for the Sweet 16. He says, we're just not tough enough yet. Punched away. Here come the Friars. Moore. He gets it punched away. Good defense by Leggett. Well, you always want your big man to put his head down, <laughs> head to the... Head to the end zone, but uh, that time more probably would have been better served to find a guard and then go get it back. But he's he's played well for Providence this year. I like him as a player. And it's interesting to see he and Croswell playing together, and uh, they have done a good job together. There's good chemistry in there, and I'll tell you what, they set very big, thick screens for their guards on the perimeter. Moore launches a three. Croswell fighting for the loose ball rebound. And a whistle in the backcourt. They got Croswell. Uh, Croswell got tangled up into that play. And you certainly don't want your big man committing a foul 75 feet from the basket. You want to use those fouls around the rim. But Croswell kind of got caught off balance in that little mess as the ball was moving up court. Croswell making his ninth start. He started all nine. Shooting 59%. Thomas, the take. What a block on the weak side. Clifton Moore. Here's a three by Locke. Too quick for your liking? Well, you got to try to get him loose. He's already made one from out there, so he's trying to feel a little bit. I don't mind that shot. Leggett for three. He got it. But that's what happens, Meter. You take a quick, maybe a bad shot on one end, and maybe a shot that's not within your offense. And then it turns into transition at the other end where you don't match up. That time they didn't find Leggett in the corner. Five points for Ish Leggett. Shoots 32% from three-point land. Three is good. Noah Locke drains it. Well, the one thing against Locke, when he's running on those off those baseline screens, you've got to lock a trail. You've got to get on his hip, make him put the ball on the deck. That time he got a clean catch and shoot. Locke has traditionally been very consistent. He's averaged 25 minutes per game during his career. He's played over 120 games for Florida, Louisville, and now Providence. From the foul line, west to the Seton Hall transfer. The pickup by Thomas, too strong off the glass. Well, Thomas probably should have dished that off. He kind of rushed the shot. And here comes Preet. Another lead change. You like Breed's game? I do. I think that he knows his role out there. It gives him a different look when he comes in off the bench. And he, he can help Pierre as a freshman handle the ball, handle the point guard spot. Breed averaging four points off the bench. It's our fifth lead change in the first 11 minutes and 13 seconds. Step back. Palau off the line. That's the problem. You make one, you think you can take another one. Archie Miller wasn't happy with that slot shot selection, but like it gets set up in the corner, and they just don't get close enough to him. And we talked about playing lock. And Thomas had a little trouble on negotiating those baseline screens, and you got to play it on the bottom side so you can avoid the screen and you come up on his hip and make him put the ball in the deck. What do you think Archie Miller was just... Explaining to Ish Leg, it looked like he was a bit upset. Well, I think you know you can get ca caught up into the emotion of this game, but you got to stay true to yourself as a basketball team. What you, who you are, and true to your game plan, and make sure it doesn't become a pickup game of just whoever gets it first takes the shot because of the emotion of the game. Air ball by Pierre, freshman who has a bright future. Cooley extremely high on his prospects. Well, Pierre's a good-looking player. He really is. He's 
Got an outstanding start to the season. Martin, the up and under. Good idea. It's a good move, but you just got to finish. You got to finish the play, and he took it to the trees. He just couldn't find a way. Lock. International waters. And West in the board. That may be a little quick and a little deep on top of it. Well, what a move by Brayon Freeman. Goes down hard. The rebound scooped up and put in. Now, Freeman kind of just threw it up there, but he drew the help of the bigs. It came over that allowed Rhode Island to hit the offensive glass. When you draw that second defender on the inside and you beat your man on the outside, the guards have to rotate down and help you rebound. Abdul Sam is sixth point. He's already over his season average. And Tim Clockerty calls a foul on Sam. You are right on top by one. Who wants burgers? Ooh, it's the DQ six. Part of the heat win. Over the Celtics last night in overtime. Those two guys were doing some work last night. They deserve a nice day off after what they did in the garden last night against the Seas. What a game. Tough to beat the Celtics anywhere. Pass of the post to Carter. Well, we talked about a little bit earlier, Meter. Spacing is so vital in any basketball game, but today's really apparent early. Both teams are going to hard pressure the basketball and help when it comes into the paint. There's a great cut by Carter from the backside. What do you like most about Carter's game? Well, he can really move without the basketball. He doesn't have to have the ball in his hands to play. We've talked about his defense already. He's an adequate shooter, but he just finds a way to help you win games. Extremely athletic. And his versatility was apparent last year for the Gamecocks of South Carolina when he made the All-SEC freshman squad. Good defense by the Friars, but to the rack. It's put up and in by Sam, who's having a terrific offensive game. Well, Abdu Sam came to play tonight, and is, this is not normally his game, but he is being very aggressive offensively and efficient. He's four for four for the field. Fade away by Noah Locke. Well, one thing that Locke is doing tonight that he hasn't done on a consistent basis all season against the better teams is moving without the ball, not just being a stationary player on the perimeter waiting for the shots. He's going and attacking. Locke and Sam with eight to lead all scores. Leggett from the elbow. Uh, real good defense by Bynum and company helping on the pick and roll on the outside, forcing the contested shot. Good ball fake by Locke. Hopkins. Power from Bryce Hopkins. Relentless off the glass with contact. So watch Devin Carter on this out of bounds play on the previous score by Carter. He just comes from the backside and face cuts. In front of Freeman, and Freeman just got caught napping on the backside. Well, Bryce Hopkins was not to be denied on that offensive series where he was denied, 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 and finally found a way to get the officials to call a foul. It looked like he might have been fouled two or different, or maybe even three times, but at least these officials are letting all the physicality go in the lane so far tonight. 75% at the line for Hopkins. Providence is a team at 73%. That was the second foul on Abdu Sam. Well, Ed Cooley's got to be happy with a couple different things so far on the offensive end tonight. First, we talked about Locke moving without the ball, finding some cleaner looks from the perimeter, and Hopkins doing his work in the lane, where I really think he is almost unguardable for, against the forward. He's so strong and skilled and quick around the rim. The problem with Hopkins in the early going, Tim, has been turnovers. 20 assists, 21 turnovers. He gets, he gets caught dribbling a little bit too much, but so far tonight, Providence looks like they're doing a better job of passing the ball. There's a great job drive to the line, through the lane by Thomas. Play to Bishop Hendrickson from Providence, and you watched him at the high school level. What'd you make of him? Well, he's a, he's a hard-nosed player. He really is. He knows how to play. Good pass in the post, but a foul on the Rams. 
Archie didn't like that call. He said, let's make that call down the other end because his guys are getting beat up down there as well. Clifton Moore. I like the way the officials are laying off. You know, you maybe call a foul on every possession so far tonight, but, you know, they're picking and choosing. You can't ruin the game by that. You just got to make sure it stays clean. More 15 to 17 at the line after the foul was on Hutchinson. Freshman for the Rams. Archie Miller is giving it to Tony Henderson. He is not happy with the lack of calls down in the paint from Rhode Island's on offense. The Friars defense. Good thus far? It's been very good. Both teams' defense has been excellent. You know, Hopkins out on the perimeter. Both teams have to understand you're going to have to mix and match and make some in-game adjustments, not only on how to play these dribble handoffs on the perimeter, but the middle pick and roll, how they defend it, depending on who has the basketball and who's the shooter and who's not. Bryce Hopkins with his first foul. Deliberate offense for URI. Thomas, the handoff for Martin. Goes back door. Open three. Hutchinson, but too strong. And Martin lost the rebound. Here comes Hopkins. Gets punched away with numbers for the Rams. Freeman. Those type of empty possessions have hindered the Rams. Well, they had numbers and they found the open man, but they just couldn't deliver. Locked. With a good roll off the iron, Noah Locke. He's got 11 points to lead all scores. The largest lead for Providence. Well, this is what Noah Locke did at Florida. He made a living in Louisville, making threes from the perimeters. Numbers have been down this year, but confident. And a steal by Devin Carter with a power slam. Oh, that was pretty. And Archie Miller needs a timeout. Jimmy Butler, Kyle Lowry, and his dad, Anthony, will like that. Uh, Devin Kupfetz turning into offense for the Friars, Tim. Points off turnovers, 11 to nothing for Providence. Well, Peter, you, you talked about it, and Providence has Rhode Island sped up a little bit, but the opportunities that Rhode Island had with numbers and in transition, they couldn't finish at the rim because of Rhode Island size. And then when they did kick it back out for those medium range or open threes, they haven't been able to knock them down. Sebastian Thomas for Malik Martin. This has been the tone for them. Shot clock gets to about five before they get going. Skips it for Martin. Good luck. Couldn't hit it. Hopkins the board. That's what they're looking for, right? Well, they're looking for clean looks, but, you know, the threes, I think they're better served to keep attacking because they're not a good three-point shooting team. You hope to get hot, but you got to get lucky to make enough in a game like this for 40 minutes to win. So you got to stick to your game plan. Play inside out. Now they only make four threes per game. 25% percentage. Lock in the put back. That was too easy for Clifton Moore. Well, nobody put a body on Moore. You better put one or maybe even two. You know, where Rhode Island's bigs are thinner, Providence bigs are thick. So you better slide down and block out from the guard spot. Six points for Moore. The LaSalle transfer. Thomas the low dribble. Hutchinson launches a three. Kept alive nicely. Good job by Bilal to keep the board alive. Martin on a double now for Hutchinson. Trying to back in on Moore, the hook. Good take by Joseph Apalau. Well, Bilal had some space in there. He went for the second to third dribble to kind of create an angle, and surprised Providence didn't dig back down on him with Rhode Island's lack of perimeter shooting. Bilal, Wichita State, by way of France. Moore, and the contact for an N1 opportunity. Clifton yeah. Moore is feasting. He's feasting, but again, this play was created by Devin Carter. The ability to get into the lane, to create penetration, create an angle off the bounce. He draws the help. No one rotates down. Allowed Moore the lane to the basket. 
Now, this is what we talked about, though, with Carter. Carter makes a lot of winning plays. When you watch them, he's maybe not going to jump out at you on the stat sheet. Number one, he's going to guard the heck out of you. He's going to take the best offensive player on the perimeter and try to and lock him down for the night. But he does a lot of things on the offensive end. The little heck, hard helmet type things. You know, he's just a, he's got this, he does the stuff a lot of guys don't want to do because they don't show up in the box score. Foul was on Bilal, his second. Think about what Providence lost to him. Talk about guys that made the little plays easy. The Al Durham's and the Nate Watson's and so instrumental in leadership and on the court. Well, the thing for Providence tonight so far is that Jared Bynum has played a real good floor game. He has not forced the issue with his shots. He struggled quite a bit in their bigger games this year against the St. Louis, the Miamis, the TCUs of the world. Those upper level type teams that they played and they've lost all those three games because his numbers aren't there. But he's forced the issue, I think, to try to become more of a scorer. Tonight he's running the floor, he's playing great defense and just taking his shots on only on opportunity. Second foul on Moore. He's to the bench. Well off the line was Weston with a layup attempt. There comes Bynum knifing through the defense. And a foul on the Rams. Well, this is Ed Cooley's teams at their best. Just on the attack, defense first, and then push it up the court. And if you find some space, get to the foul line. So Bynum will have two shots after the foul is on Leggett. Interesting dichotomy between last year and this year. The shooting's been way down for Jared Bynum. Well, he's in a totally different role. A year ago, he was the sixth man. He was the microwave off the bench, the Vinnie Johnson type deal where he came in and just made shots. Yep. And you're worried about everybody else on the floor. And he also played alongside Al Durham, a fifth-year player who was really good at the point. And Bynum, that allowed him to kind of be a shooting guard, play off the ball a little bit, and then sometimes play the point. This year, he's been asked to play the point. He still had a little bit of that scoring mentality, but tonight he has really played a great floor game. Rob. Chiku could not handle it. Why are they off kilter on the offensive end? It's because of Providence defense. You know, the, the pressure on the perimeter is really bothering Rhode Island. It's got them out of sync. Their rhythm and timing is off. And then when they do get the ball in the lane, Providence big guys are, are protecting the basket. And that tells you all you need to know with a punctuation point for Croswell. It's the largest lead for the Friars at 14. Right now, Providence is slowly but surely wearing Rhode Island down with their toughness and their size up front. The Providence ball movement has been special. And here on a little two-man game, we talked about Bynum not forcing the issue. At times this year, he just pounds the ball on the floor. He'll dribble 10, 12 times in a half-court set. Tonight, he has been making quick, on-point decisions. Yeah, he has four of their nine assists. They've made 16 buckets. Shooting 53%. Thomas, the runner. Croswell rips away the board. And a timeout. And we will take a timeout as well. The Friars are rolling in the late stage of the first half. Did you ever lose 79% of your scoring and no. 70% of your rebounding when you coach? If that happens, usually you're looking for a new job. You say, I, I got to go somewhere else. But Ed, they have regrouped very quickly. He's got an unbelievable great co assistant coaching staff and they have recruited some really good players and you know Providence fans are panicking early because of a couple losses but you see the talent is there the put back by Hopkins the Kentucky transfer ends the first half with an exclamation point now, this has been the case all step up and get some big numbers this half to get back in this game Rhode Island basketball to start the second half. A sellout crowd of 7,800. Ish Leggett averaging 18 points and a good way to start the second half. Well, certainly I'm sure he was approached at halftime by Arch Miller and said, listen, you've got to get going. You've got to be more aggressive, even to the point where you're a little selfish on the offensive end. 
what a drive with Hopkins finishing by his finish at the end of the first half. Baseline drive pinned by Bryce Hopkins. Here he comes, triggering the break. Bynum goes baseline. Will Hopkins take the three? Yes. And Abdul Sam goes over the back. Our first half recap. Ed Cooley was concerned about this game, but this team did a terrific job. Well, it started on the defensive end of the floor, though. They really, in the last 10 minutes of the first half, they took Rhode Island out of all rhythm that they had going on early. They forced them to take some tough shots from the perimeter, and then they really got up on the glass. What are your keys in terms of the offensive flow for URI in the second half as Freeman going to slow down a little bit? They, they're trying to play a little bit too fast. They're caught up in the frenzy of the game and Providence defense forcing them to be uncomfortable. The first three possessions, though, they look like they're just slowing down and trying to run their stuff. And the storyline in the first seven games for them has been their lack of shooting production. In the post for Croswell as he posts. Man, he is a low down low. Well, not too many people run in better inside specials than Ed Cooley. He finds a way to free up his bigs on the inside. Perfect pass from the perimeter by Hopkins. Like it. With a misfire. Triggers again on the passing of Providence. Well, this is just beautiful basketball. Four round one. They reverse the ball. Roswell does a good job of pinning up and sealing off his man on a low box and finishing easily. Malik Martin, a take. Those are the ones you have to hit. Well, Martin's had a few of those tonight, and he makes the move. He gets all the way to the goal line and then doesn't can't deliver. And the problem is Providence's size makes you take your eye off the target. And instead, you see the big bodies coming at you, and you kind of twist and turn, and you can't finish because of the fact you're in traffic with the trees. Well, that's a great observation. Martin's one for six. He's coming off a six and eight game at Boston College last Sunday, a game they lost by four to fall to two and five. Martin, a Charlotte transfer. Making his eighth start, he's averaging six and a half points and six rebounds. Bynum. Post again. Providence in the paint. They are big boys. That's all night long. And Ed Cooley has gone into his playbook right out of the gate here in the second half to make sure we're going inside. We're going to establish ourselves right at the rim. And they have been highly successful with all their sets. Good counter by Brayon Freeman at the other end. And a timeout. Hopkins with a 10 and 8. Of course. Dinner. Dinner at the Coast Guard house after. Doesn't matter who wins or loses. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe a little Federal Hill in front. Uh, I don't know. Uh, okay. Well, Archie Miller called that timeout. He was disgusted with his team's toughness. This allowing layup after layup in the half court. And even though they scored, he called a quick timeout to remind them we've got to play a lot tougher. A drive by Freeman. Not what he was looking for. Here comes Providence with some numbers to Croswell. Fills the lane. Oh, that was special. Well, that just can't happen if you're Rhode Island, though. You've got to make Providence earn it. And you can't let the big man just kind of prance down the middle of the floor and go undeterred to the rim. But Providence right now is imposing their will on both ends of the floor. You see in transition that Rhode Island doesn't do a good job matching up. And you've got to put a body on Croswell way before he gets positioned right in front of the rim. Croswell, part of their points in the paint, the plus 16 edge. He hasn't missed. He's four for four as he takes a seat on Ed Cooley's bench along with Jared Bynum, who was just whistled for his second foul. Freeman, the George Washington transfer. Uh, Devin Carter is just stuck to ish like it on the outside. Leggett just can't get free. He can't even get open other than about 25 feet from the basket. Carter is just denying him at every spot on the floor in the half court. See, the other key thing for Providence, Peter, is that Ed does a great job of rotating his bigs. I mean, you start with Croswell, then you come in with more, and then you come in 
with you've got uh, all your bigs you can use at once. It's, that's the thing. Castro's in there now, and they don't get tired. And you just run your tail off for four or five minutes, and we're going to rotate you in. And that's really hard on the, on the, the team you're playing because of the fact that if you don't have a, a lot of depth at that forward position, they, they're going to wear you out over 40 minutes. Second foul on Malik Martin with Carter at the line. And he told us a shooter out today. Ed Cooley said, I want a million paint touches. Plus or minus maybe one or two, but a million. Wait, you saw that was their game plan from the get-go. We're not going to fool around, stand around, and shoot threes. We're going to go at them in the paint, wear them out down low, and they have done that not only in the half court, but in transition. They're running their bigs right down the middle of the court, the rim run, and they're trying to post up right in front of the rim. Good job down the other end. Abdu Sam, who's five for five from the field. Carter, the hop, skip, and a jump. Out of control, and Sam grabs it. Behind the back by Leggett to Martin. A contact to the end one. Malik Martin celebrates. Well, Malik Martin, for once, didn't have... Moore or Croswell in there, it's a big difference. Castro is a good young player, but you see defensively, he doesn't have that width or girth on the inside. He just kind of backs up. He's got to meet Martin outside of the paint. Instead, he's backpedaling, and Ed Cooley's going to have a little talk with his freshman. And Foul on Castro, his first. With Martin trying to complete the three-point play. Comes Hopkins. Jaden Pierre manning the point with Bynum on the bench. Patient Friars. Good pass. Moore missed the dunk. Dribble drive by Pierre and pretty move by Freeman to leg it. Bit out of control though. Leggett can't breathe on the perimeter. Carter is right in his grill. Freeman, the double team, and he's got smothered by Devin Carter, who launches a three. And out of bounds. So Providence shooting 52 and a half percent. 14 point lead. I was but a child. You're gonna get balanced, plus your leading scorer is gonna go get at least his average, but. Devin Carter has had a lot to say about Ish Leggett and the way he's played so far tonight. Leggett has eight, ten below his season average. He's the man with the ball through the lane. That's what you're looking for, Tim Welsh. That's what you're looking for. That's what he's looking for. He's looking for Devin Carter to be on the bench. So he finally felt a little bit more breathing room in the half court. That's nine straight games of double figures, but Hopkins has the counter punch. He's so tough. I mean, he dribbled from the left wing all the way to the right side of the rim, and no one came near him. Rayon Freeman. Like it. Good ball movement by the Rams. The lob. Athletic attempt. And down goes Bilal. It's the second foul on Bryce Hopkins. Well, Freeman's got to be aggressive as well. Like it's been more aggressive this half. So it starts with those two guys because they are capable guards. They can make plays off the bounce and get to the rim, but... Providence gives so much help, and their, their length is really bothering Rhode Island when they get in the lane, because even when they find an angle, it's hard to get the ball up on the rim and complete the play because the help is coming, and the help is big. How do you counter the length of Providence? I mean, you really have to space the floor, and you got to try to you set some more screens for Leggett. Maybe try to pin up Carter, set a double screen, set some baseline screens for Leggett just to kind of get him some sort of free freedom in the half court. Jaden Pierre, four-star recruit. Good swing by Hopkins to Breed. Moore 
Picks up a foul. That's on Ish Leggett, his third. Leggett from Prince George's County, Maryland. Basketball rich area. Well, Rhode Island traditionally has done a good job in that, in that Eastern Seaboard recruiting guys up here. And, you know, Archie Miller is definitely going to get this program back to where it needs to be. It takes some time. The people have to be patient. Which most aren't, but uh, they understand. They say, what word is that? Well, Patience? you know, I think people around here understand they've got a quality, a real good coach here, and a guy with a proven track record. Uh, and so they will be patient with Archie Miller. There's no doubt about it, and he will turn things around. And just consider the atmosphere today with 7,800, a sellout crowd. Terrific facility. It's 20 years old. It feels like it's not that old. They've done a really nice job here creating a great game day setting. If you could put the electricity back in the building, it would help. And Freeman got away with a third, maybe a fourth step on that drive to the rim. Thomas. And here comes Hopkins. Look at the push. Breed the finish. Man, that was executed well. That was executed. Providence, they know, their guards know that their bigs are going to cover the backboard. So they can leak out a, a little bit and cheat. And that's what Breed did on that possession. He knew the bigs had the glass covered, and he got out quickly. Wow. Wants the three again. Joseph Falau, his second three of the night. And he's in double figures. Oh, the great Jimmy Barron spoke to the crowd before the game, and the ex Rhode Island sharpshooter, he must have been working with Bilal before the game. <laughs> yeah, Jimmy Barron scored over 1,500 points at Rhode Island. Not many great, better shooters than him around. Bad longtime coach. Three. Clips it more. Well, that's today's game, Meter. The bigs can step out and shoot the ball more. And that's why Moore is so valuable, because he can stretch the defense. They'll, they'll pull him out on the perimeter. He can knock that down. And if they don't play him, he'll take it. If not, that'll allow Hopkins some freedom in the paint. Providence has three and double figures, including Moore with 12. But the elbow by Joseph Bell. Well, sometimes you got to adjust your scouting report mid-game. Moore needs to get out on Bilal. He kind of just watched him there. He's got to get out and contest. Wow, as a season best 12 and a steal. Abdu Sam and a foul in half court. Well, Rhode Island just kind of throwing the ball up on the rim. They need to. Thomas needs to look at the rim, and you saw Breed. He just got out and said, I'm going to the hole because we know we're going to rebound the ball. And then there's more. Oh, big guy's got a little deal going on. You don't guard me, I won't guard you. <laughs> They're kind of just standing out there all alone. But Moore just picked up his third foul. He'll go to the bench for Ed Cooley. So Sebastian Thomas has done a good job of getting into the lane. The problem is, is like, he's just kind of throwing it up there. He's not shooting. He's not finishing the play. Maybe that's youth. Maybe that's the pressure. But most likely, it's Providence big guys in the neighborhood bothering the shot. Screen by Sam, but Thomas trying to work off of it. It's on Croswell, his second. Croswell a little too aggressive out there on the pick and roll, showing hard out on the wing against guys that aren't going to knock down shots. So they're big. You'd be better served taking maybe a half step back instead of committing the foul on the perimeter. Steal, Devin Carter, South Carolina transfer, look out. And the finish. My goodness. That was simply fantastic. The finish by Breed. Well, Providence has turned the Jets on. Starts with their defense. Don't turn it over. Because Speaking of unbelievable, Alan Breed has come in off the bench and just out of transition, finishing plays, solid defense, not forcing shots from the perimeter, and he is played almost a perfect game off the bench Red Cooley. Exactly what Ed Cooley is looking for. Seven points off the bench by Breed. And that was an uncharacteristic performance for them against TCU on Wednesday night. Didn't shoot the ball well. It said they were sloppy. They said 
Didn't play well at all. Drive by Sebastian Thomas. That was a good drive by Thomas. I like Thomas as a player. I think he's going to be a good one. That was the first time tonight, though. He had his head up. He was bound and determined to be balanced and finish the play at the rim. Ryan the go for Croswell and the putback by Croswell. Well, that's the problem that Rhode Island has. Croswell gets all the way to the rim. There's four Rhode Island players standing around, and on the second jump, he outworks all the roadie players. Croswell five for six from the field. Hutchinson. Weston three to shoot Hutchinson to the rack well done to beat the shot clock that was good patience by Rhode Island Hutchinson found a little lane coming to the middle of the floor and Roswell and Hopkins decided not to attack first two of the game for the freshman Lewis Hutchinson from Upper Marlboro Maryland averaging three points he started three times this year pass one of the cutting Carter and Croswell didn't find him well the thing tonight though meter that the bigs for, for for Providence have all passed the ball very well we know Hopkins is a good passer but Croswell has done a nice job Moore has done a nice job as well and that time just to force the issue a bit on the baseline only the second turnover for Providence in the last 20 minutes plus of playing time Good back in by Weston, the Seton Hall transfer. Now Carter kind of got pinned down in the box. Unusual for him to get beat down there, but Weston, a real strong post move. Now Weston at three and a half points a game. 16 minutes per outing. Good job off the glass against BC Sunday with six boards. bottom has been quiet to breed. Off balance, and he still made the shot. How do you like that? Alan Reed looking like Al Durham from a year ago, just hanging in midair and finishing in traffic after the bump. Al Durham was their Mariano Rivera, their closer. Well, Breed really looked good so far tonight. Uh, Hutchinson on the baseline. And he'll take the end one opportunity. Well, Rhode Island has been comfortable in the last three possessions, and it's a little bit they're gaining confidence and playing a little bit more free. And, and here's a breeze, just the hang time in the air after the contact. Third foul on Croswell is going to get a look at Breed, who hasn't missed from the field at four for four. Well, John, I've seen it in this building and in this matchup before. One team gets a little bit of a lead, and you relax just a touch on the defensive end, which Providence has done in the last few possessions. And Rhode Island's gaining a little confidence. They have to be aware that Rhode Island is going to put their nose down in this game, and the crowd gets back into this game. Rhode Island could get back into this game. They're going to whipped up into a frenzy. Even at 11 points. There were nine lead changes in the first half. And Providence built a 16-point halftime advantage. Bynum, the reigning Big East sixth man of the year, now starting. The defense by Thomas on the perimeter. Rhode Island sticking her nose on the defensive end. Baseline drive. Hopkins forced it. Good chase down by Croswell. Bynamized the three. And he buys the three. Wow, great shot, Jared Bynes. Great shot, but even better intensity on the glass. Just imposing their will, toughness, physicality. They missed the easy one. They stayed with it. The ball. In today's game, it really doesn't matter who the point is, but sometimes that can play tricks with your mind. As, are you a scorer? Are you a guy that's going to run the point? And I think they showed him a lot of film this week, and he looks more comfortable tonight. Sam misses the funny. Both teams shooting well on the half. Rhode Island 63%, Providence 61%. Right in the crossover.
So Rhode Island trying to cut this deficit farther. We'll see what happens coming back after this time. This half been a little bit more aggressive still, though. When Carter has been up in him, he's had a big problem. Foul before the break on Croswell with Sam at the line. Also Hopkins with four assists. Oh, he does it all out there. You know, at times this year when you watch tape on Providence, I think he's sometimes a little too unselfish. And I think he's still trying to fit into his role, understand what Ed Cooley wants him to do, with also respect to the other guys in the court. He's got a lot of good, lot of good players around him, but... When they post him down low and he has some space, he's pretty much unguardable. But he does so many other things. He's a fun player to watch. Sam's had a good night for Rhode Island with 12 points. With Joseph Apalau, they're leading the Rams. Unexpected offensive production for the front court. In the post, Hopkins... Relentless again off the glass. Well, Rhode Island's guards are watching this from the, from the outside, and the big guys one-on-one -on -one against Hopkins have no chance. And that time the guard came over but didn't build the wall, just kind of reached in. You can't reach in against Hopkins. You've got to be tough. What a pass by Palau to Sam. Good court vision by Joseph F. Palau. It was. Hopkins ex overextended on the perimeter, and that was his fall on defense. He gambled, and Rhode Island made a pay. So the career night continues for Abdu Sam with 14. Three. Bynum the three. Oh, what a board by Hopkins keeping it alive for Locke. Locke's had a quiet second half. And here come the Rams. Yeah, Bring on Freeman. They did a better job boxing out on that possession. And he said it before, Rhode Island has to rebound with four guys on the defensive end. Nice look for Leggett's not knocking down. Reed. Pull up jumper lock. We've been talking so much about Hopkins that we kind of got away from Locke and what he's done tonight as well. Just a real solid performance on both ends. Freeman goes baseline. Good opportunity for Bilal. Find him out of control. Well, how do you stop Bryce Hopkins down low? First thing you got to do is you got to get around him. You can't lose that physicality war. You probably have to dead front him down there, but you just see he's amongst two, three blue, light blue shirts and just says, I've been in the weight room longer than you. Move out of my way. He's just a load down there. Six minutes per game last year for John Calipari in Kentucky. Well, you know, there's a lot of reasons for that. Probably didn't deserve the minutes, but I do know Kentucky did not want to lose him, and you can see why tonight. Lock. Too strong. Weston. Well done by Brandon Weston. So a 12-point lead for the Friars. That was just fantastic. Wow, well, they've done a great job at Providence with the student support. That's the key to any home court advantage, and they've built it to a big-time level. Also, their ability to close games and win close games. They won 11 out of 13 last year. Five points or less. They took 11 out of those. Good pass by Bynum and Moore for the finish. Now Bynum, any doubts that he should be the point guarder? You can throw him out the window. I never had any doubt. You, know, you just got to keep working with the player. Today, keeps his dribble, keeps his head up, waits for the defense to fight a little bit. Just the perfect delivery to Moore. Abdu Sam to the bench with four fouls. That was team foul five. Now, we were talking about Bryce Hopkins earlier, and how do you game plan and defend him? Because... The problem with him when you're trying to defend him is that he is too big and strong for a smaller forward, and he's just too quick for a big, strong guy. Thomas to Bilal. 
Bucket counts. Count the baskets. Good call. Basket interference. Basket interference. It looked like uh, Moore. I think he had Tim Clockerty had Moore up on the rim and might have touched it with a fingernail or something. I don't. I could, it's a hard. The goaltending is such a hard call because these guys are all playing way above the rim. Yeah, credited to Balao. Zip pass by Bree to Carter. Now this is Ed Cooley at his best, digging deep into his playbook, looking for mismatches almost on every possession. That time, they haven't run it all night long. They got into their flex set and just immediate back screens. And Carter is so explosive coming off those screens. Fast, explosive, and strong. Kind of like his dad. And there's Anthony Carter with Jimmy Butler and Kyle Lowry of the Miami Heat. As they cheer on Devin Carter. Miami beating the Celtics last night in overtime. He'll be at Memphis on Monday. Spending some time in New England. Carter's a 74% foul shooter, but got some talent. Pat Riley loosening up uh, the rules. Not a lot. Not making the, the guys go back on the team plane last night. That's all right. You got to support the family. <laughs> Did Coach Spo has something to say about that, too, right? Well, after a win against the best team in the NBA, why not? Hutchinson. Weston, the high bounce. What happened there? Well, just rock solid defense. Providence built the wall. They didn't overextend. You have to shoot over the top, and they've had trouble all night long finishing. Chased by Thomas, he'll take it baseline. Nifty dribbling by Jared Bynum. Nifty dribbling, great spacing, tremendous screening and ball movement from side to side. Weston almost a turnover. Thomas trying to blow by. Roswell engulfs it. Carter, what will he do? Baseline, the bump, and the foul. Foul on Hutchinson of a URI. Now the key to Jared Bynum, nine points. The key to Bynum has been control, keep your head up, and make sure. Punch you in the mouth type team. And today, right out of the locker room, they did that. And give Ed Cooley and his staff a lot of credit. You know, they turn it around quickly from Wednesday night. Granted, this isn't Rhode Island's one of their best teams, and Archie Miller will get this thing going, but it's not about that. It's about the way Providence played the game. We're going to take the ball in the paint, and we're going to attack you with our defense. And then terrific guard play from Bynum, from Carter, from Locke, and from Breach. Excellent balance. And pretty much the formula that Ed Cooley wanted to see. Emphasizing we're just not tough enough, as you just said. But that has been what the doctor ordered today. URI led 23-22, way back at the 640 mark for the first half, and they haven't led since. Well, the depth of Providence front line is, is her Rhode Island, the depth and the side. When you're, you have a lot of depth, you can really play a physical game. Here you see Croswell foul out, but that's not an issue. You've got Moore, you've got Castro. Even if needed be, you can play Hopkins at the five if you got into a pinch. And, you know, basically, the bottom line is, you want to impose your will, you want to have an identity, but the other piece of that, of all of that, is what we said is that basically we have Bryce Hopkins and you don't. And that's, that's was very evident tonight, that he was by far the most talented and best player on the floor. 14 points, 14 rebounds for Hopkins. Croswell fouls out with 10 and 5, and Balao is at the line for the Rams. You know, an overused term in all sports is, can this coach build a culture? Can he build a foundation? Can he build a new organization, for lack of a better term? Can Archie Miller do that? What's it going to take? Oh, 100%. There's no doubt in my mind. I've watched these teams for years, going back to Dayton. A proven winner, uh, the son of a coach, a great player in the ACC. He's going to get this thing going. He's got a tremendous coaching staff. Well, it's hard to just go grab guys in, in the spring. It takes time to build recruiting classes. And 
you know, Sean's now at Xavier. They are having big success. He will be successful there as well. And uh, two really, really good basketball coaches. And they learned from their dad. They they worked. They paid attention. You know, you can have a coach in your family, but you got to pay attention to what he did and how you build a program. And Archie and Sean are very similar coaches. They're going to play hard, hard defense. They're going to build the skill, and you know he's got to get some guards in here over the course of the next couple of years that can make plays and, and that can shoot from the perimeter. Well, you can appreciate that because you're a coach's son. Well, you know it's it's something when you grow up as a coach's son. That's an advantage. You're going to practice since uh, the time you can walk. <laughs> so it's. Uh, that's what Archie and Sean. You told me about some recruiting trips you took in well, upstate New York. Yeah, well, we'll talk about that at another time. <laughs> <laughs> Those are long conversations, long trips. I thought it's some interesting cars as well. Well, on Hopkins, third on the six-seven Hopkins. The you know, Hopkins, a top fifty recruit coming out of high school, and Providence was a finalist for him. So Ed Cooley, obviously very familiar with him coming out of high school, he chose Kentucky, but when it came time to make a move, Ed Cooley was his guy. Well, that's what, how the game has changed, as we all know, with the transfer portal. It used to be you lose a kid to another school and you wish him luck and that's it, you move on with your life. Now you better have your assistant stay in touch with his AAU coach and just stay friendly with him, Keep stay on the phone because... We all know what's coming in the spring. There's just a flurry of guys that are in the portal, so you've got to be ready to pull the trigger if someone wants to transfer. A steal by Sam, but then another steal by Moore. Tough break for the Rams. Reed. Seven to shoot. Carter eyes the shot clock. He'll have to launch. And just off the line. Rayon Freeman. Wild but effective. How about that body control? Uh, that's what they need. They need Freeman to be an attacker. They need him to be a guy that can complement like it in the backcourt because they need that second score out there, which will free up. Martin and company to get easier baskets around the in the paint. Freeman has 12. The adjustments that the Rams have made on defense. Do you like what they've done or no? Well, they've done some good stuff. They've clogged up the lane a little bit more, but Bynum has really done a good job. That time he turns it over, but running the team, and it's been too much because of that. They're not getting any easy baskets, even when they do get a stop or a turnover. Pin job by Clifton Moore. Who's top 15 in the nation last year in blocks per game with 2.7 on the south. 83 blocks for the Explorers set a school record. Yeah, he's a good pickup for Providence. And, you know, not much not much surprises me anymore, Meter. We college basketball, we've seen everything and Obviously, we know that the portal now, the NIL has changed the way things are run and op the operation of a program. But one thing that has surprised me that when you look at Providence, what they've done the last couple of years. First of all, they lose the five starters from a year ago from the dream season. And then they retool and put a team like this on the court. I think they're going to have a very good season. You know, people are starting to panic when they lost the two games at Mohegan Sun. But... Uh, they're a work in progress. When you put a whole new group on the floor, it takes time. But the thing that does surprise me is that Providence has such a good staff with Jeff Battle, Brian Blaney, and Ivan Thomas that none of those guys are head coaches. They should be getting looks to be a head coach. Leggett has 12. Playing with four fouls, 26 minutes for Ish Leggett. That's a good, good point. That staff is cohesive for Ed Cooley. Well, they've been together for a while. They understand what Ed wants. And today, the, these players have delivered what Ed wants, and that's toughness on the road. Step back. What a move by Jared Bynum. Boy, that was superb. Not too shabby. Well, he and Locke and Breed 
that played almost a perfect game along with Carter on the perimeter for Providence. And that's what you need. You go on the road, it starts with your guards, and then you've got a superstar in Hopkins to go through when you need to. So Providence deliberate in the waiting stages. Back door to Devin Carter. Three's the three. Carter over the back and the putback. One of the more athletic players in the Big East, Devin Carter. Freeman, the blow by. And Archie Miller will take the timeout. Well, we talked Devin about Carter outstanding. Yeah, sorry, man. We talked about teams forever. Most nights show up and play 100% hard. And they did it pretty much from pillar to post. The 132nd edition of the Ocean State rivalry in the bus. Won by the Friars, 88-74. to 74. Your final thoughts, Tim? Now it's done with defense first, and then offensive execution. A lot of balance, using their depth, using their defensive intensity.